This hey, is all YouTube, in fast I hope forward speed. He's off to a fast start. Measure your ass job, trying to figure out what all well, I'm gonna have to remove. YouTube copyright claimed out. my video you know, because my table I had music on. playing in the background, so Dude, I had to go in and you. delete it. And first, you gotta uh, get that back bar into off a there. over for you guys. Get it out of the so way. So I'm gonna take way, care of that and get it right to your thing. Thing you don't break anything. So we gotta take the side panels off. Or at least loosen them enough where you can get them up to get the bolts loose out of the bar. And sometimes they have bolts hidden in plain sight. Oh, there it is. Go ahead and get this bar loose on this side here. This machine is a true metric machine. All the nuts and bolts on it are metric. We're getting it loose on the other side. We're not gonna completely remove it because the simple fact that there's so much more that would have to be taken off uh, electrical switches and all that stuff is unnecessary. So now we got to get the uh, the fluid reservoir for the hydrostatic transmissions out of the way. Get we're going to take it loose down at the bottom and take care of the bar and the shroud all at one time. Got to get the fuel canister off to where we can remove that bar. Okay. Everything's loose. Pop it out. Put it over to the side. Now we're undoing our electrical wiring to the engine harness and the starter. Be sure to undo your negative battery cable so you don't have any accidental starts Get all this out of the way. I really hate doing voiceovers because I get sleepy whenever I make these videos. I'm putting these videos together. So at this point right here, uh, I can't see what I'm doing. Give me just a moment and I'll figure it out. Oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Forgive me. I was undoing the uh, choke cable and the throttle cable from the from the engine. Get it out of the way. Suck the oil out of the machine so we don't have a bunch of oil to deal with on the table. We're gonna lay out our mat because we gotta get underneath the mower. And my air compressor on my truck is, uh, the pump has quit working so I don't have air to lift this machine. So I'm using a jack and I'm not able to get under it as far as I'd like to. The uh, electric PTO has got to come loose. You gotta drop it. You gotta drop the. Uh, you gotta drop the, the drive pulley, off of it, and then you have four bolts that hold the engine on. I believe all that was uh, fourteen millimeter. Oh boy.
and we discovered that our drive belt and our deck belt was eat up. And we got to got it on the bench. I've already got the engine apart, and uh, I've got all the gaskets removed. I got it cleaned up. I've got the seal out of the bottom, and I got I've got to clean it up. And I'm gonna point out here to you where it was leaking. Okay, it was leaking around this hose right there. Okay, and then there were several points of leaks on this thing. It was not only the main seal, but it was leaking there from around that uh, drain tube. It was leaking right there. Uh, if you've seen the previous video, you would see it bubbling right there. Now, the NTF uh, threaded plug would not fit in that hole after I got, there, got to it. So to keep from having to drill it out and tap it, I found a bolt that would fit it, and I used some red silicone sealant, just like I put around the uh, the gasket surfaces, and I threaded the bolt in there and tightened it down, and that will seal it off. That's exactly what I did around the field tube. Also, I used red gasket uh, sealer on it and here i am i'm opening up the package to our new seal and get ready to install it we got to have some grease you take a little little grease this is yama lube grease right here it's a high quality grease get some of it in my hand we're going to pack it the old-fashioned way just take and pack it just like you was packing a wheel bird. Yes, it's messy. No, I don't like grease on my hands. Uh, you ever met a mechanic that don't like grease on his hands? That's me. Let's get this packed in there real well. We'll go ahead and get that uh, crankshaft lubed as well. All right, and we're going to just seat it down on there. Let's get our hands clean. Then we're going to get this little brass hammer. If I wanted to hit it very hard, I would get a big hammer. First, we got to get all that grease off our hands. All right, we'll get our brass hammer, and we're just going to tap it into place. Be very careful not to get it get it crooked or anything like that. We're gonna, just going to tap it around. Until it gets flush with the engine case. Okay. Now. We should have a socket here that will fit over that. That will fit around the outside edges. I want to get down just below the bottom of that engine case. Just below. Not much below, but just below. There I am seating it. Being clumsy. Checking it and make sure we're going in square there I think we got it right there okay let's get our hands a little cleaner 
We'll clean that seal up with any excess grease on the outside of it. When I was going to technical school, they told us to use Vaseline for this. But uh, as you can see there, I got it just down below probably, I don't know, 10, 15 thousandths uh, below the edge of that bottom of the motor. Okay, there's the inside of it. And we're getting ready to put it back in place. We need to clean up the inside of it, make sure we ain't got no excess uh, grease, oil, tidbits of gasket, any dirt, anything like that. We need to make sure we got it cleaned out. And there I am looking with my little purple light at, at the grease. And that grease looks takes on the appearance of almost leather underneath that purple light. I really like this purple light for looking at fluid leaks and stuff like that. It really uh, makes fluids take on a different color. Uh, uh, it's really strange uh, what that purple light does to, to stuff. It's not a black light. It's a purple light. Get all that brake clean out of there because we don't want it mixing with our oil. I think right about now, Freebird is playing on the radio. I'm not for sure. I guess they expect you to be bored while you work. All right, we got all of our gasket surfaces, mating surfaces clean. Let's put our red Permatex gasket sealant on it. And yes, I use this because... It never fails me. Um, I've used it from applying uh, water pumps on old 454 engines, 350 engines. If it can hold up to that kind of heat and that kind of pressure, then uh, this these small engines... It'll take anything, these small engines, any heat, any pressure these small engines produce, it will uh, take it and then some. So just apply a good coat of gasket sealer to the mating surfaces of this engine where the bottom sump is. I'll leave a link down below for for uh, anything that that you possibly may want to use or anything else. And yes, I mean the red does show. You got to kind of be clean with it. You don't want to apply too too much because when it squeezes out, you really don't want to use silicone at all. In a, in a real world basis, I would like to use a gasket with a copper coat on both sides of it. And that would be very sufficient for doing this, but they don't even offer a gasket for this thing. So there we are. I mean, we're they use a gray RTV and obviously the gray RTV is not very good because from the factory it leaked. It leaked. So, you know, Let's use something that I've been, it's tried and true for me. So 
Uh, I've sealed up water pumps with it, valve cover gaskets, uh, sumps for lawnmowers. Uh, I wouldn't use it on a Harley because, I mean, you got all that chrome and all that nice stuff. So I wouldn't use it uh, in a situation like that. But we're talking about a lawnmower here. All right, we're finishing up with our bead of silicone. And uh, we're getting ready to put our sump back on. Everything should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and get this put in place. Let's get everything lined up, get our gears meshed, and start sliding it into place. We're going to get our brass tap hammer. We're going to start tapping it down. Till it falls in you want to be gentle with it because you if you if you go too fast with it the faster you go the more uh, chance you have of rolling your seal if you roll your seal and damage it you might as well start all over There we go with the bigger hammer. We're seating it now. Making sure our, our dowels fall into place. Now we're ready to put our bolts in. Get our little bit of grease cleaned up off that seal. Alrighty, let's get them bolts in place. Looks like we got a good, good even pull on our seal. So let's just go ahead and get it put back together as quickly as we can. We're gonna clean them bolts off a little brake clean, and then apply some red Loctite to it. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you to please subscribe so I can, I need a thousand subscribers and, um, I'm sitting at less than 300 right now. So, uh, any and all of your subscriptions are greatly appreciated because I would like to monetize this channel so I can continue to bring you these videos. Looks like I'm dancing. Guess I'm doing a Lone Star Mobile Mechanic jig right there, huh? All right, let's get all these bolts in place. Oh, we're not going to be able to get this one right here in because of the, the plug is in the way. So we will have to get started and get our corners matched. And that way we'll get our silicone pressed into place and... Uh, then we'll remove that plug and uh, put that final bolt in and tighten everything down. Go in a crisscross pattern. Sure and get them all. Let's 
I'm going to use a half inch adapter and a crescent wrench to pull this, this plug out with. Go ahead and put our bolt in and get it seated. We're going to go ahead and torque all the bolts down to the proper torque specs. Now we're going to clean up our plug and reapply some red silicone to it and put it back in its place and torque it into spec. Remember, pipe plugs are tapered. The further they go in, the tighter they get. You do not want to bust your engine housing, so... You don't want to put them in too tight. Thus, that's the reason they wiggle loose from the factory and leak a lot of times. So, in this case right here, we're putting this red silicone on there so we can stop that silly leak. Don't want to put it too tight. But you don't want it to come loose either. We'll clean up that little bit of red lock, uh, red thread. Excuse me, not thread locker. It's silicone. Clean that silicone up. Now, I do believe that Mower Medic 1 made a video the other week making fun of me and my red silicone being dried up. So, that just lets me know that he is watching. And I appreciate you watching Mower Medic 1. I really do. And I appreciate the tip on how to keep my silicone uh, from drying up. I should have known this. I should have done this all along. But, um... A lot of times I don't take the time out in the field to take care of stuff like I should. And uh, if you put a piece of plastic over your silicone and put the cap on it, it should last a good long time. I believe right about now the radio station is asking you for donations. Every dollar does count. The Texas Children's Hospital. That's a fact. Which I firmly support. Check. Thank you guys if you do. Here's our starter. We're going to replace it, put it in place. We'll slide it in place around this hose. And then I'm going to tighten them both bolts down. And then I'm going to remove the one bolt and put the oil dipstick in place and suck it down tight. And I'm going to use red silicone around that old dipstick 
so it don't leak. I treat each and every one of my customers just like I'd treat my best friend. And this guy is one of my best friends from long years past. And um, the last thing in the world I want him to say is that Chris, he uh, said he had all the oil leaks fixed on his thing and it's still leaking oil. I would rather him say in about eight or ten years from now, yeah, man, I had old Chris, he put... He put new gaskets on this thing. Oh, 10 years ago, it ain't late to drop. I'd rather him say that than, man, that Chris half-assed fixed it. But what am I looking for here? Oh, okay. There's our oil tube, just like I said. You don't want it down inside the engine. So you just get you some on there around your O-ring. And as you press it into place, it's going to squeeze up toward the top of the dipstick, not down inside the engine. Seating it into place. We'll get our bolt. And... Retain it real well. Excuse me, guys. I'm yawning. I'm getting sleepy. I do not like doing voiceovers. So now we're getting ready to install our new oil filter. It's a genuine colder oil filter. And this customer, he believes in using the uh, Kubota brand oil, which is probably just the same as castor oil, oil. But that's what he's always used his uh, boy. Yeah, that's what he's always going to use. <coughs> I know this guy. Now we're going to set this engine back into place. Yeah, I carried that engine by hand. We're going to start hooking everything up, trying to keep up with this guy at five times speed is like double trouble on the guitar. It is trouble. We're trying to get all of our wires hooked back up. You know, our starter wire and all that good stuff. And I do believe I see myself facing crawl up underneath there and uh, put our motor mount bolts on and our um... wow, he's already done. Oh, he's not. Here we go. Yeah, put our motor mount bolts on, put our PTO on, our, our drive belt pulley with the short end up. You got to make sure some models use the short end up, some models use the long end up, depending on how the pulleys, your counter pulleys and everything are positioned, depending on who builds the lawnmower, you got to pay attention to that. That's a fact. We put the drive belt in place. Man, I'm getting hot and sweaty. It's humid. It's hot. I washed this lawnmower off in this place, so I'm getting wet and nasty. I look like pig pen. <laughs> I 
this point, I'm kind of getting hungry. I hadn't eat all day. Wait, I'll take that back. I had a hamburger for lunch. I sure did. But I'm still getting hungry. It's getting dark. It's two days before my birthday. There goes the mail lady. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been my ex-wife cruising by. She likes to stalk. We're getting our uh, shroud and our uh, protection bar put back in place. I'm on the prowl looking for something. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'm prowling and looking. You wouldn't believe on the 9th of December, I'd be sweating like this, but yeah, I do. And it's not because I'm fat. Let's go ahead and get our our side covers on. really starting to get dark get our battery hooked up we still have a deck put a deck belt we need to put on and install time to bust out the Bruin light I'll leave you a link down below for a, a light like it. This one I picked up at Harbor Freight. Adjusting the, the deck back down to where I can get to it to work on the deck belt. You can't see this, what I'm doing. And I'm pretty much doing it by feel. But uh, you got to get in there and you got to take the covers off to put the, the belt on, get it in place. You got a, uh, a keeper on that back pulley. And uh, to 
you get your belt on there and uh Yep, it's pretty dark now. Time to give it a crank and a test and then uh, make sure to top off the oil and get it get get it right and then we're done with this job. Thanks guys for watching. I hope that uh, you can pick up something to learn. Please subscribe and uh, like this video.